Good morning and welcome back. My name's Simon and in this video I want to talk to you about my luxury item, the bush chair. So I know when you get to camp at the end of the day, whatever you've been doing, if you've been out walking or canoeing or whatever, you know, you could sit down on a log or you could make yourself a, a simple wooden seat um, or you could sit on a stone or you could even sit on your, your kneeling mat that you've got stuffed away in your backpack somewhere but at the end of the day they're not that comfortable and um, certainly for me I want to be able to sit comfortably around the fire um, and just relax so I always take with me my bush chair it's tiny it fits into a small uh, it's an old tent peg bag um, stuffs down to the bottom of my rucksack I don't even notice it's there um, weighs nothing and the other components that I need to make this I can just cut from trees around camp um, so I don't have to carry the poles with me. So the chair itself is a simple piece of fabric. I use a bit of nylon. I've had this for ages and um, I actually found the bit of nylon so the bush chair is the size it is just because that's the size of the bit of fabric that I found while I was out walking with Maggie one day and, um, and it's just a piece of fabric like this a rectangle and it has a sleeve in the bottom which is about three inches across and it has a sleeve in the top which is about uh, an inch okay and through the small sleeve at the top you just thread some paracord I've got about two meters two and a half meters of paracord here threaded through and around on itself and there's just a, um, a simple overhand knot forming a loop at one end which the the tail end goes through and cinches it all up so it gathers the fabric together at the top and the bottom the sleeve is bigger so that it will accept a pole which is part of the sort of structure of the seat if you like. The other thing I carry with me in my bag here are two lengths of paracord um, about how long they are four or five foot I suppose um, you know. 700 mil or so um, and these are used to lash the horizontal uh, pole to the A-frame which I'll which will become clear when I when I show you that in a minute. So for the poles you're going to need three poles to form a tripod and I like to cut mine about as high as I can reach okay so whatever that is I'm about six foot and it's what another foot and a half seven seven and a half foot something like that that tends to work quite well for me so I have three poles at about seven to seven and a half feet long um, so I've cut three here from some hazel. Um, you will need to use green wood for this, um, not just some old bit that you found on the, on, the, on the forest floor because it's structural, it's got to support your weight at the end of the day. I would suggest uh, cutting three from some hazel. Um, you know, hazel grows in such a way that coppicing it is actually good for the tree um, as long as you don't get too carried away. But um, I've got three poles here and I cut each of these from different hazel bushes, from different hazel um, stands. Okay, so I've got three at seven and a half feet. I also have a pole at uh, just over a metre um, and that is the horizontal one which, which gives the bottom of the chair its, its shape and its structure. If you have any um, twigs and offshoots and bits and bobs like this and, and knobbly gnarly bits, um, you can just cut those off with your knife um, or with a saw, you know, whatever it takes, your axe, whatever you've got with you. Um, you want to make it as, as smooth as possible. It's a chair after all. You don't want to be catching yourself on, on uncomfortable bits sticking out. It's especially important for the short pole which goes through the fabric itself. I've lined up the other end, the bottom, which is obviously the thicker end of your poles. Um, and what I'm going to do is start tying my chair on. There's different ways of doing this. Some people use a separate bit of cord, paracord or whatever, bind the three together to form a tripod and then hang their chair off it. But I chose to have the, the binding cord as part of the chair itself. So I've got a knot about a foot up from the top of the chair here. Okay, And that's just a marker knot for me. That just shows me where I need to start winding and I'm coming down about 10 inches or so from the top of the of the uh, the three poles and I'm going to start 
by just wrapping the paracord around the three poles. I'm then going to start going in between the poles. Okay, and then I like to weave, so I'm going to go over this one, around, and under the middle one, over the top like this. So the cord going to the hammock chair is coming over the top of all your bindings. Okay, and then that is enough. That's you know, you, there's a whole number of different ways you can tie that on there, but that's how I just tend to do it. It's, it's simple and it works. Take your short pole, thread it through the wider sleeve at the bottom of the chair and then see roughly where that's going to come in. You may need to adjust your legs in slightly. That's the beauty of a tripod, you can do that. And then you want to just see roughly where it's going to end up sitting, about there I should imagine. So I like to use a knot called the Canadian Jam Knot. And um, it's dead simple, I keep these bits of cord in here as I showed you earlier, and that's what these are for. And one end has a permanent knot tied in it about an inch from the end of the cord. Okay, and it's just a simple overhand knot. And the idea is that you, you, you make two overhand knots. One of them is permanent, one of them you can undo. But you need to make sure that the knot is tied the same way around. So if you went left over right on this one, you need to go left over right uh, on the second knot, otherwise it won't grip properly, okay? So. So I've got two knots, one loose and one tight. You simply go around with your long tail, okay? And you're gonna thread the tail through the, the hole in your second knot. Okay, and pull it through like this. And how it works is that as you tighten that up, these two knots come together and constrict on the tail end. To release the Canadian jam knot, all you have to do is take that little tail there, which is the, the bit that was an inch, where your knot was an inch in from the end, yeah? You've, you're left with a little tail, that's your, your running end which came through, and all you do is you just pull that, and that loosens it all off. So the nice thing about this chair is that it's almost infinitely adjustable. You can bring these two poles here in further. You can move the back pole further out so it's more reclined. Um, there's all sorts of different ways that you could adjust this. You could have the, the pole higher, the, you know, this horizontal bar higher or lower depending on, depending on your needs. And um, you know, if you need to move it, if the wind changes direction and the smoke starts blowing in your face, you can just pick the thing up, move it around and reposition it. It's a brilliant, brilliant thing and ever so comfortable. You know, you can spend all evening just nestled back into this with your fire down here somewhere and it is, it's comfortable and it's relaxing. So I'm not claiming this to be my own idea um, by any stretch. Uh, you know, this is just how I chose to set my bush chair up and how I, how I do it. Um, you know, there's loads of different ways of doing it. And I'm sure if you looked on YouTube, there would be no end of video tutorials on how to set up a bush chair. Um, but this works for me. Um, and, you know, the reason they are popular is because they work. And you've only got to take something very small with you. You know, if, if, um, if weight and size are key, um, you know, this takes up no room. You can buy folding collapsible camp chairs, but they're, they're bulky and they, they, they have weight to them. So um, you know this is this is lightweight. So there's another way you can set this chair up if you are camping in woodland. You can use um, one of the trees around you as one of the legs of your tripod. So you're simply going to make a two-legged um, A-frame. So you're going to have two legs and your crossbar, um, 
and you can just rest the whole thing up against the tree using the tree as your third leg. Okay, this obviously means you have less wood to cut um, and uh, yeah, less time to set it up. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope you might have found it useful. Uh, don't forget to uh, leave any comments in the section below. And um, if you haven't already done so, your subscription would be most appreciated. I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Mm -hmm.